Mark Changizi with your Science Moment. Today I'm going to talk about excess deaths and a kind of confusion that people have. They don't really get it in their bones. When the deaths occurred, when they first occurred with COVID back in March and April, and let's presume that they are predominantly actually due to COVID and not just with COVID and not lockdowns, and there's a whole bunch of arguments that there's a lot of reasons for why these, these are actually, many of these are hysteria deaths. But let's set that aside here and let's just talk about what it means to have excess deaths. And part of the confusion here about excess deaths is that the wave of COVID came after the typical winter wave. Every winter, as long as there have been animals, viruses come in the winter and they kill off more. It's just every year there's this cycle of, of deaths and that rise over the winter are cold and flu deaths. They don't count as excess deaths when they occur over the winter because we always have these extra deaths over the winter. So as a little analogy, let's just, let's just make it a little bit concrete. Let's suppose that I usually have breakfast at 8 a.m., but you catch me one day having 800 calories, a second breakfast at 10 a.m. Now you can say, Mark, you just had 800 excess calories. And it's true. I had, at 10 a.m., in that hour, 800 excess calories. Now, is that really bad for the day? How bad of a situation is it in terms of my calorie intake exposing on that diet? Well, it's not actually any worse than the 800 calories that I have at breakfast at 8 a.m. They're the same. But the 8 a.m. breakfast, even though there's 800 calories there too, doesn't count as excess deaths because I have that every day. So it has to be put in context. These notions of excess deaths, you may have a certain amount in the summer of deaths and it's gonna count as a ridiculously high number of excess deaths because we don't get cold and flu deaths in the summer. And it could still be an absolute number, a tiny, relatively tiny number of cold and flu deaths relative to the absolute number of cold and flu deaths that we have in winter. Now, in addition to 800 calories at 10 a.m. being excess calories, but in, in addition to putting in context of what it means, that it may not be any more than, in fact, the absolute amount of calories that I have at breakfast, it also means that if you see me having 800 calories at 10 a.m., well, it could mean that I didn't have my first breakfast at all. How could I have 800 calories at 10 a.m. if I just had a full breakfast? I'm not a hobbit with that kind of high metabolism. And that's what we find also potentially for uh, in the case of COVID. The 2019-2020 the wave prior to the COVID wave was relatively mild. That winter, the number of cold and flu deaths was relatively low compared to, the, to previous years. It had actually negative excess mortality. It was actually low. But it still had big absolute numbers in terms of absolute, but in terms, it was still lower than normal, which means the typical target of those colds and flus are those with comorbidities, and they're typically very old. And in the case of COVID, COVID's average age of death is older than the average age that people live in most of these countries. That means there's more dry tinder, more folks that would have potentially been pushed over the edge in the 2019-2020 winter, survived that winter, and something else then pushed them over the edge. So it could be that even though we had large excess deaths in March and April, it could have been that over the entire winter curve, it isn't, in fact, any higher in the excess. And, this, and for the same reason, I may just had a small smaller than normal 8 a.m. breakfast. And a third possibility is that even if I had an 8 a.m. breakfast, that is, even if it was a big winter uh, uh, cold and flu year, and we have COVID, the excess deaths in March and April, which is like my 10 a.m. excess calories, it could still be the case that overall, over the longer term, there's no excess deaths and no excess calories. Why? Well, in the case of breakfast, if I had a, a breakfast at 8 a.m. and excess calories at 10 a.m., well, now I'm just full. How can I possibly have the same calories I would in a couple hours later? In the case of the analogy with, with the virus, well, a lot of the folks who are being killed off are those folks that are going to probably, that, that have very short lifespans left. They've got months, weeks, months, uh, less than potentially a year. Often these, the total amount over the whole year may be about the same. And when the COVID curve came, it's taking out folks potentially a few months earlier, a few weeks earlier than they otherwise would have survived. You, have, you can't presume that these are going to be excess for the whole year. They're excess just for those months. And how much there is for the whole year, you'll just have to wait for the whole year to check. So I hope you understand a little bit better what these excess deaths mean. They don't necessarily mean what you think they mean. They're entirely contingent upon which week or which hour of the day, in some sense, you're talking about relative to previous years.
what really matters is the absolute number of people that are dying, and that should, you shouldn't use excess deaths at all. You should just be worried about how many people, in fact, are dying. And that was your science moment.